So we just finished up uh, my latest project. I guess for this type of video, you know what it is already. We have a Mark One Audi R8 V10. It's the 5.2 liter V10. Uh, this has got an ESS supercharger kit put on it. And we have currently got ourselves up to around 700 and a bit horsepower. 710, 720 is the sort of ballpark. So obviously this uh, ECU in his car is originally a NA uh, ECU, it's not a turbocharged ECU, it doesn't understand what boost is. So when you throw a supercharger or turbo on these engines, what happens is that the, the ECU doesn't understand what's happening. And so the ECU is looking at your engine load all the time and it sees numbers suddenly going above 100% because 100% is theoretically what the maximum load is on a NA engine. It starts seeing 130, 40, 150% engine load or whatever. It freaks out, it goes, this isn't normal. And it starts ignoring its sensors, it just ignores the maths and just says, right, I'm going to assume a default load and forget about what my sensors are telling me because clearly they're broken. And so what happens is this. You come on, to, you come on as the boost suddenly goes over that 100, 100 and a bit percent uh, plausible load, the ECU freaks out and just locks itself to one setting, causing the car to go lean. Now what everyone else is doing to, do, to map these cars is they're just going into inject tables or whatever and just fudging in 20%, 30% more fuel to make the air-fuel ratio from, from here back down to here where it's supposed to be. Now the problem with that is that the ECU doesn't really know what's going on anymore. It doesn't know whether you're at 110%, 130%, 140%, which means you can only set one level of fuel and one level of ignition from 100% up to whatever boost you're running. Now, if you're running a small amount of boost, you can kind of get away with it, you know, seven, 800 horsepower, just fine. If you look at the people who run the, the big turbo kits on these, they're usually going onto like a, a MoTeC or a Cyvex unit. And the reason is that the ECU is freaking out. So what we've been able to do is actually patch the ECU to remove the limitation that's in there. The plausibility checks the ECU has about what its maximum air pressure should be, what its maximum engine load should be. And by changing the ECU to understand and accept that these num new numbers are normal, so if it sees 140% engine load, that's perfectly fine and normal, suddenly it doesn't turn its sensors off. It trusts its sensor readings. The two maths in the car are more than capable of reading up to 900,000 horsepower. If you need to have more power than that, then all you need to do is upgrade them to 90 mil maths. Larger diameter maths can read higher. That will support 1500 plus, easy. And because the ECU understands what's going on now, there's no drivability issues, there's no hesitations, there's no rich spots, no spat firing spark plugs that other, other people have had issues with these cars over the years. So we can quite happily tell the ECU exactly what's happening. We can then adjust the tables in the ECU to have values for 100%, 120%, 140%, you know, whether it's ignition, whether it's fueling, and the ECU runs just fine. It's happy with the boost. Now, this being a supercharged car, it runs approximately 830 horsepower's worth of airflow, because you've got to remember that a supercharger has a parasitic drain. It takes energy to turn that supercharger, so you're losing about 100 horsepower or so turning the supercharger. If this was a turbo R8, this would be a factory ECU running just over 800 horsepower. And that means I'm confident that given the code patches I've managed to develop for this ECU, both which would work on the Gallardo V10, as well as the Mark 1 R8, could easily support 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 horsepower without a Cyvex ECU, without a Motec ECU. This opens up a lot of possibilities now. So I've just laid up the graph that I've just done. And as you can see here, the air fuel ratio follows a nice target, comes down, richens up as the boost builds, perfect control. And because the ECU understands what's going on, it's perfect control all the time. If the weather changes, it doesn't go wrong. It stays consistent. If your boost level increases or decreases slightly on a turbo from lag or from going on off the throttle or hills or whatever, it's all in control. All right, so we're in the car. I've got live data on here just to show you. So as you can see, the car is sat now off. No engine speed, but you can see how the cylinder is currently 100% full because the cylinder's got air pressure in it because it's sat in fresh air, not moving. When we start the car in idle, we watch the number go down to below 100%. That's what happens when you're in a, in a vacuum on your boost gauge, for example. 
when you open up an car full throttle you'll see 100 load roughly thereabouts maybe 105 you've got some good good uh, tuning going on there but that's as much as you'll ever get what happens though when this car gets too high on the load it just freaks out but as you can see with our patch this will count all the way up to about 135 load 140 load so let's start the car this is a uh, full straight through exhaust so it's a bit a bit loud So you can just see on that run there, we made a little bit less this time, um, but you can see how the air fuel ratio follows the plot. And the uh, second run I did, it followed the component protection plot, which means it drives a bit richer when the car gets a bit hotter. Uh, but yeah, so there you have it. The live data showing the ECU is seeing the proper load going on uh, and is capable to run the engine perfectly fine under boosted conditions. Kept the throttle wide open, no throttle closure, understood the load proper addition tire mapping, proper fueling, matching the target all the way through. So this car starts, runs, drives beautifully like a factory car, as if it was a supercharged car from factory. Um, other things we've done, the, the owner likes a bit of pop and bang, so he's got all the overrun pops and bangs and flames on there because that's what he enjoys. And uh, we've also taken the cold start because this is a straight through DCAT exhaust. So when you started it cold, it used to make a heck of a noise. So now it starts up, I was about 900 RPM, a bit nice for his neighbours. So I think now is to get him to test drive and see what he thinks.